This is my Peugeot 307 2007, roughly about 50,000 miles. The 1.6 petrol version TU5 JP4 engine with automatic gearbox. And this is a video of how I do my full annual service. So this will include uh, changing the oil, changing the oil filter, changing the air filter, changing the pollen filter, changing the spark plugs, and more importantly, gapping the spark plugs and also resetting the service counter on the car. If you're really interested to see that, stay tuned. First of course is changing the oil and before changing the oil one needs to drive the car to get it pretty hot. I generally have a drive around 30-40 minutes in order to get the oil hot. So before draining the oil one needs to undo the oil filler cap. And of course, for good measure, I also pull out the dipstick. So when you're draining the oil, air that comes in the oil filler cup or the dipstick can displace uh, the oil and air could come in. Next is to undo the sun bolt down here. And this is a 24 millimeter socket. And of course, you have to have a kind of a suitable pan to put underneath to uh, gather the oil. You kind of undo it and you're pushing it at the same time until it's kind of completely undone and then you try to move away from the hot oil. Something like that. Next is to undo the oil filter and I've waited roughly about half hour so all the, all the oil to drain in the drain pan because there's always a bit of oil until it drips so I, put, I will put a lot of tissue around because I always make a mess. This is 27 millimeter socket. I've done it almost before coming out and now oil is starting to drip in the pan so I'll leave it another 10-15 minutes like that slightly open so it will drip down and then I won't spill oil everywhere. So that should be it. No more oil dripping in the pan down there so that should be fairly clean because I hate oil dripping everywhere that's why I take as much a precaution to not spill anywhere. haven't spilled anywhere that's a success for me so open it only slightly wait for this to drip down and I have to suck this oil from the filter there so sucking all the oil that is left in the because slightly tilted the filter slightly there I'm using this huge syringe as a CD syringe all the components are in the description of the video and I'm using this six seven millimeter pipe that one can plug in inside but it's fairly loose so what I generally do I have an electrical tape and I'll put it around this creates a this creates a perfect seal and it never really leaks anymore let's see how this will go because I'm in between the camera and uh, and uh, and the light So for the new filter I'm using, man filter, that's the number, it's in the description uh, below of the video. That's how it looks like, as a gasket. Uh, that's the filter. But before putting the new filter in I have to clean the housing with a tissue and clean it up from oil. Because it's a bit on the oily side and I'd like to mop all these. Of course you have to take out the old gasket, which is fairly easy to do. Put in the new o-ring and generally I'll dip it with a bit of a with a bit of oil, not dip it but just slightly have a bit of oil on the o-ring 
and I haven't cleaned it that well so I can use this oil that is on the <laughs> on the filter. Put it on. And then of course fitting in the new filter I mean there is no difference whether you put it that direction or the other way, same thing. Goes on top of the spring, there is a little spring there. And then it's kind of putting it on. The tightening is 25 Nm. Of course, mop a bit around if there's a bit of oil. Next thing, of course, is to fit the drain plug with, with the washer and uh, fill it with oil. So that's the sun plug. There is a washer here. I'll try to remove it and replace it with a new one. I can also just kind of unscrew it rather than a screwdriver. It seems to be easier. I will wipe off any kind of residues or stuff and just to try to be as clean as possible for the plug and I have a new washer it's kind of a washer and in the middle it's rubber and it goes on inside you can just stick it in like that and now um, tying up this on the on the sump so of course you can wipe the sump if there is any oil that is dripping there was quite a bit on mine but what you do is try to be as clean as possible first fit in the bolt And then you can wipe it around. What I generally do, I have a clutch and a brake cleaner, shake it a bit and then spray around it and wipe it off. Next thing is to tie up the sun bolt. It's 30 Newton meters torque. Newton meters. Next, of course, to fill up with oil, and I'm using Total Quartzineo ECS 5W30. That's recommended for my car, so I'm using that. The car holds 3.25 liters of oil, but if you've changed the oil filter, this holds about, well, let's say 500 or so milliliters. So it will be slightly less once you start the car and and work it the oil will drop because the filter the oil filter will saturate with oil so it will drop slightly so it has to be observed but i'll tell this in the end it has to be observed once you've run it then you have to top up with with oil of course i would also try to wipe around here if there's any any oil i have cotton buds so i'll move them around to, to clean any oil that's or any debris that's out there just to kind of keep it clean I try not to wipe it on the top so not to introduce anything just just around it try not to put anything inside for how much oil so this is this is a dipstick I'll try to so this is graduated so I'll try to do it two lines from the top um, not the middle but just kind of two lines at the top and what I generally do I fill it up about 2.8 liters or so it's 3.25 the whole capacity and then I pull out the dipstick check how much this and then top up with 50 to 100 milliliters just not to uh, overfill it and even though so I've tipped roughly about one liter so I'll check it every one liter down the dipstick pull out the dipstick and see how much is there. It hasn't even started on the dipstick, but I'll just check it from time to time just to make sure that I'm not overfilling it. So once you've done this several times, then the last phase is to just check on the dipstick, wipe it clean off, put it back again to measure. And that's just one uh, probably you can see it is just one of these lines underneath the maximum that's perfect now next thing of course is to replace the air filter so in order to 
get the filter out, the air filter out of the car, one needs to remove first the resonator. There is a pipe that's connecting the air resonator to the air filter box and a clip there. So first of all taking the, the pipe there, that pipe you rotate it clockwise that direction until it kind of frees and then you can take it off. The resonator box has a small tab down here that you push that direction basically push it mine is a bit broken it's a bit flimsy but you push it that direction and then pull that complete resonator off once the resonator is out this pipe is rotated clockwise as well and it could be pulled out next in order to take the air box off there is 10 millimeter socket bolt there that needs to be undone Next is the brake fluid reservoir, the two hex bolts here and here. So there is also a, a clamp here that holds the air filter box to the, to the dozer unit that needs to be undone. Until this is free and it's moving. Also in addition that pipe from the crankcase has a yellow tab here that you press and pull it out. And it could be put aside like that. Next of course is uh, taking the whole air box off. I generally you pull out the brake fluid reservoir, put it aside and then you hold, I, I push it with one hand, then you kind of move it slightly until it releases. That could be put aside and the whole air filter box is out. Then I'll put of course the the brake fluid reservoir so it just doesn't dangle on its cable. So this is the air filter box out and six bolts here, here, here and three on that side. That needs to be done. This is lifted and the air filter is underneath. So then it's a simple lift of the air box and that's the, that's the old filter. And you simply Pull it out from one side probably and it's not too bad. There is a bit of dirt here but it's actually fairly clean but I'll still replace it. For the oil filter I'm using this pretty long Bosch, this S337. Um, it's the same filter, the other one. It has a bit of a, a foam here. The old filter is MAN and the Bosch one has an additional a bit of a foam, well some filtering so that's actually quite good they probably do the same function though so you stick it in put the cover back on top and tighten uh, these six bolts the other things are also looking to generally look into where the crankcase enters here if there's any oil that has been leaking from the crankcase but it doesn't seem like it's pretty clean. So while I'm at it I've taken out the filter let's push this slightly to dangle the brake fluid reservoir. That's the dozer unit that here is the dozer unit so I'll also try to look if there is any oil or any if it's dirty and it, if it needs to be cleaned but that seems pretty clean. If you want to see the three bolts and you take it out you can clean it but if you want to see my video about changing the that will appear here changing the injectors these engines I show how this uh, can be removed there as well. Fitting the air box with the air filter inside is pretty easy, it's the reverse procedure. On the air filter box there is this rubber and cut piece here that goes inside here so it has to you have to make sure that it goes inside that small plastic there. Generally I'll take the brake fluid reservoir, push it aside, slot it in. Of course you can put back the put back this reservoir there. And then of course trying to match it, uh, this pipe is always in the way so you have to kind of hold it up and then push it towards that direction until it kind of it's in there. Make sure that bracket is in there. Push it a few more times to make sure that <laughs> this is nice and secure. Next thing of course is that. Next thing of course is the crankcase pipe. So I'll pull it 
and it kind of clicks you just push it and make sure that it's nice and secure next thing is the bracket there that has the the bolt also don't forget the two bolts for brake fluid reservoir I'm using the same position the same bolts and I'll first do it by hand just to make sure that they kind of go inside all right rather than trying to force force it and don't go too crazy on these two bolts it's it's on plastic and you might you don't want to cross thread anything next is the 10 millimeter bolt here the pipe that has to be pushed in and you turn it you turn it counterclockwise to lock in and just pull it to see that it has connected there of course the air resonator that just slots into place you have to push that pipe so it's kind of in the way and I always find this a bit tricky this pipe because when you you can't just push it you can you can push it to click inside but you kind of have to rotate it slightly push it inside and then rotate it again so it kind of locks into place and then you make sure that it doesn't come out from both ends and that's it that's now tight and secure I always check that if it's tight and secure from both places from from the air box and from the air resonator otherwise if it's open from that side you just suck air from the warmer side of the engine rather than from the colder side of the engine next of course is to do the spark plugs and this cover needs to be removed it's a hex six hex uh, bolts next thing is to undo the cover and it's clipped around here so basically you just lift it there is a clip around here that clips on this pipe so one needs to remove this the crankcase well, that's the crankcase the crankcase breather pipes they're push fit so basically just push it and put it aside push this blue tap and just pull it and that kind of goes away we can also remove it from from that side just to be completely freely from the air filter on, on on that side so this is the ignition coil so in order to do the spark plugs one has to remove the ignition coil with one single pack the plug has to be also removed and the plug is basically simply you pull that pin there is a pin that kind of comes out basically push it with a screwdriver don't lose it and that pushes down the whole plug you can kind of put it aside like that next of course the ignition coil pack has got four bolts one there one there and there it needs to be undone and that's it uh, next thing is to take the ignition coil pack it's kind of holding both sides and kind of rocking it a bit there we go comes out nice and clean I have a bit of a grease inside the rubber so it doesn't stick so that's why it's a bit of a nice and easy to, to take out for the spark plugs I'm using this seven, uh, 60 millimeter so it's 60 millimeter kind of deep socket quite deep socket and this is magnetic so when you put it inside turn it then it kind of grabs the spark plug and takes it out so there is usually a technique for these spark plugs basically you start to twist them but twist them a little then go back uh, and so on until it kind of frees you don't want to damage really the threads and you can hear how they're squeaking a bit so I'll go back and forth do a bit of a turn then come back half a turn do a little bit more and then come back half a turn do another turn and then come back a bit more if they're really stuck but this I can feel it's kind of all right so I can actually undo it 
I'll just undo them, I won't take them out completely so there are no dirt to fall inside. I'll undo all four of them and then gap the new spark plugs. I mean, it's basically the same technique. If you haven't changed them in a while, you undo half a turn, go back a quarter, another half a turn, go back a quarter and so on until you kind of free it and see that, that it's actually working. These are the spark plugs that I'm using on my car, NGK, and they are LFR 6B or 6677. They look quite alright. I mean you can use Bosch or anything else, they come with a cover here for the for the spark plugs, for the electrodes. What's crucially for these spark plugs, uh, hopefully you can see them, the distance uh, between the electrodes has to be 0 0.9 uh, millimeters. Normally some of these say that they come pre-gapped at 0 0.9 millimeters but what I found is generally that they're not pre-gapped sometimes they're 0 0.85 sometimes a bit more than that so what you need to do the two tools so they're pretty cheap I use this measurement too it's pretty cheap Chinese made so it goes uh, all sorts of measurements one millimeter 0 0.9 millimeter 0 0.85 0 0.8 I'm using only these three, the 0.8 millimeters, 0.85 and 0.9 millimeters to measure the gap between the electrodes. So this is for measuring and for shortening I'm using that kind of device. It's also cheap. All of the components that I've used are in the description of the video down below. So basically what you do if the gap is too large, you screw this in here and then you do this plunger and you kind of do it a, a little bit by little bit and this shortens the gap so you can kind of tighten it and reduce the gap and you measure it while you're doing that then release it, unscrew it and your spark plug is gapped. If the spark plug is shorter, the distance is shorter of course than 0 0.9 if it's not pre-gapped. I'm using long nose pliers like these uh, long nose pliers. So we'll grab the top electrode and just pull it only slightly. You don't need to pull it too much. Don't touch anything else. One mistake that people might do is stick this in and just press it open. But that kind of damages the electrodes where the long nose pliers just grip it on the sides and you pull it slightly then measure and so on. So let's see what this gap is for the first. I'll try it with 0 0.8. That's 0 0.8 and that goes in pretty easy so it's more than the gap is more than 0 0.8 let's see 0 0.85 and that goes inside but it's fairly difficult to go inside so it's roughly about 0 0.8 and this gap so how do you know if it's 0 0.8 or something so when it just goes inside it touches both sides it's, ab it's about 0 0.85 and 0 0.9 it's extremely difficult and it I can kind of force it to go inside but it's extremely difficult to go so this is roughly about 0 0.85 or just 0 0.85 so what I'll do I'll slightly hold it here pull it only slightly not too much then measure again with the 8.5 to see how it goes inside well it goes kind of all right let's see 0 0.9 it's just about it's slightly on the tight side. I mean you can see how it holds it so it's slightly on the tight side. So I'll pull it slightly more. You don't need to yank it too much just only slightly you can do this multiple times. So 0 0.85 that goes pretty easy 0 0.9 and that goes just about right. I mean it's it's just a bit on the tight side to push it in but that's about uh, 0 0.9 that's it so let's say for example you've pulled it too much or the gap is way too big let's say for example this old spark plug I mean I can put this 0 0.9 that's 0 0.9 and it really goes inside quite easy so it's way too much so what I'll do I'll put it in the do that put it in this device screw it in It doesn't screw more than that. I'll then start tightening this and and uh, try with the start tightening it and try with the 0 0.9 to see. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. I'll try to I'm trying to position it 
that's still too big screw it a bit more until uh, it's also too big screw it a bit more let's see how this is starting to get there but it's not quite one slight turn and then let's see if this is still a bit more another turn let's see how this this is this is kind of about right for the 0 0.9 it kind of goes inside and it, you can kind of hold this so that's probably about right let's see if I undo it, it probably will lift slightly when you undo it just from the spring action from the mat you can undo it and and test it inside rather than taking it out but that's actually oh yeah that's actually actually perfect let's undo it and that's a 0 0.9 and what I can do is actually it's actually exactly perfect. Goes inside and it's a bit on the tight side. I mean I can hold it, I can hold it like that on the metal. It will eventually come out because it's exactly uh, 0 0.9. That's how you have to gap to 0 0.9 or the four spark plugs. I mean you can use other devices than that one. There are these around that have an increased so you can you can turn around around the spark plug so you can turn around and exactly see how much the gap is but I went for this device next of course is to take out the four spark plugs they already are kind of unscrewed so I can do it without any torque wrench or anything and that's how it comes out it stays uh, magnetically to that so it's actually a pretty good device it's much easier because this is extremely deep deep probe so next of course you would like to really see if there is, has been any oil around the spark plug so these are all four spark plugs and they look actually all right I mean you cannot quite see it too much light but there isn't any oil on them generally you'll look for any oil bits or anything but they look pretty much the same there has been some charring around here but that's kind of normal and what I would next like to do I have bought this pretty cheap endoscope device I would like to really plug it in from in the different cylinders and just check if everything's if anything's out of the ordinary so let's see how this device uh, will work I'll twist it slightly so I can see around in the cylinder down there uh, cylinder number four you can adjust the light as well, uh, but I'm trying to really to see. Uh, so that's the side, otherwise the whole cylinder. That's the side of cylinder. There has been some carbon deposits, work, but that's kind of normal. But I'm looking generally to see if there is any uh, any oil. I might use some products uh, to clean this out. Uh, but generally, it looks as what you expect. It's not, it's not really too bad, uh, not too bad deposits around, around here and there. There has been a bit of a, a deposit around here. That's the first cylinder, and like that, I'll check all three, all four cylinders just in case. They are saying they all look quite uh, the same. Next thing, of course, is to put the spark plugs, and what I'll generally do, I'll undo those from their respective protective thing put them on in the magnetic thing so it will kind of stay and do it by hand don't really do any torque wrenches just put it in there try to see to turn it by hand not to cross thread any threads when you turn it you kind of feel it that is turning and I'll screw it down by hand of course and that's about as much as it can go and like that the next three and then uh, torque wrench on those next thing is to torque those and this is 25 uh, newton meters next thing is to put ignition coil pack back and what I'll do uh, there is a spring that that connects in there but I would like to just on the sides here uh, put a little bit of a silicone grease and on the sides there just so next time it's easy to take out and I use this silicone grease it's just easy and I'll put only 
a tiny amount, I'm not too sure you can see it, but it's extremely tiny amount on each of the holes. So just simply only at the beginning just put a bit of a silicone grease. And of course on the on the bottom here as well and just to so it kind of doesn't stick so next time when I take it out it doesn't really stick to the spark plug and I can kind of easily take it out this this goes around the here the spark plug this protruding so it's just easier next time to take it out and I'll do all four like that next of course is to put it uh, back in try to lift that one and try to wiggle it in it always I mean it's always on from the springs it comes up so basically you push it down in put the bolts in of course you have to don't forget to plug in the plug here uh, then you have to put in the metal bracket in there push it inside and that's it that that's clipped of course I've put the bolts in and basically just push it down and of course uh, do the bolts you have to be quite careful not to cross thread any threads then of course is sticking the crankcase breather is just push fit push it like that and then that side as well is the same uh, push fit this pipe has to be clipped on that and of course always make sure that these are connected next is to put that cover on and it clips it clips on that pipe so if your car has a pollen filter it's down behind this insulating material that has a few of these clipping things that need to be removed and I'm using a trim removal tool it's just easier to, to do with There are three of these clips and there is also one clip down there that I'm pointing. It's just a simple twist that you have to undo. It's a simple plastic that you, you kind of uh, twist to undo. Then of course this insulation material could be taken out. These clips on here, these clips on, on here, I like that. Always the other way around. It goes on, it goes on like that and you unscrew it, it's a simple plastic thing on a pin. And this is the, the cover for the pollen filter, simply pull it out. Uh, try to be careful, there is not that much you can do. From one side it's broken on mine, but you kind of take it out like that, you pull it. And then of course the pollen filter, you just also pull it outside. That's the old one, a bit uh, on the black side. And that's uh, the new filter. You have to observe the arrows uh, are pointing down and it says airflow. So this has to, uh, the arrows have to point down. So the air comes from the top and goes to the bottom. Uh, you put it inside uh, as far as it can go, like that. And then the cover, of course, you just simply push it there make sure that it has clicked everywhere so it uh, makes a, a, a good contact and that's it the pollen filter has been changed and fitting of the insulation cover is the reverse procedure of the fitting you stick it inside underneath I'll first uh, cover the the top ones because it's just easier and then I can do uh, the bottom ones And of course one final thing is that screwy thing that goes uh, on there. You have to kind of feel uh, where, the, uh, where the thing is coming and, and, and screw it on top. So after the full annual service I drove for roughly about 
30 40 minutes this is the the day after so I left the car this is a cold engine so in the next morning I'll check on the dipstick and see how much the oil level has dropped I mean I had it just on the on the top just to the maximum but the oil filter is brand new so to suck a bit of oil will, will be in the actual bowl of the of the oil filter there'll be some oil so this would have dropped so take this out wipe it wipe it clean dip it again and then pull it out and see how much hopefully you can see it or or not but it's, it's exactly in the middle of the arrow so it's it's about here so we have to top it up of course one in once you pour 50 or so milliliters you have to wait 5-10 minutes in order for the oil to drip down uh, it's not that quick and then you can measure how much you've poured in the dipstick and like that only until it's too kind of or just under the, the maximum so if you have performed full service on your car and would like to reset the service indicator counter I haven't flicked anything on you flick it on the key and what you can see is that it says that I have 17,050 miles left and oil is okay of course but I have 17,000 miles left so I'll switch it off wait for this to shut down the BSI to shut down and then the two buttons here one here and one there so this is for the trip computer here 288.3 miles so you hold that button flick the, the key on the switch and this will start counting down from 10 uh, till 0 until it reaches 0 you release everything and that's it uh, your service indicator will have been reset so everything now switched off I'll hold that button probably hold it with with the right hand I'll hold it on uh, the trip service on the right flick the switch and then this 10, 9, 8 into uh, go down to zero and once it's uh, go down to zero I'll release that button and this would have reset my service indicator there we go it has zero with two dashes if I switch off the car wait for this to completely for the BSI or ECU to shut down and then if I flick it on it will show uh, 20,000 miles on uh, my car is 20,000 miles is the service so it's shut down if I switch it on it shows 19 850 it doesn't show exactly uh, 20,000 miles but that's fine with me I'm not too sure why it shows uh, 19,850 200 and, uh, 150 miles off the, the 20,000 but that's still all right if reset the service counter yeah but that, that's it that's how you reset uh, your service counter then that's it check it from time to time also check the sump uh, the bolt sump if it's not dripping once you've driven it and if it's not dripping you can check it on cold now uh, with a finger to see if it's not dripping oil if it's not if it's dripping oil just tightening very slightly only a slight touch so it kind of seals but with the um, Newton meters that are shown I haven't seen any leakages or anything uh, but that's it thank you very much indeed for watching hopefully that was really useful let me know for any comments if you have any suggestions that how you do it differently let me know for any comments thank you very much indeed for watching